whatsoever you are or who you are canada is a place for everyone to be so if you come in with kids canada is open for everyone like i said before so that is not a problem at all welcome back to my channel my name is Ade Dayo I am a Nigerian youtuber based in Canada I talk about immigration I talk about uh, lifestyle gossip and any other thing I feel like talking about at the end of the day so thank you so much for joining me today if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for joining me uh, I'm so grateful that you took a chance on me and decided to subscribe to my channel and if you are a first-time person you, you, you stumbled by my channel uh, by chance or however way you stumbled upon my channel thank you so much for taking a chance on me and just, and just viewing this video at all today I'm going to be celebrating 45 subscribers 45 subscribers of you all like I am pretty stoked, I am super stoked, I am happy that I started this journey this month and I have gotten 45 subscribers. Trust me, it is not easy to get just one subscriber. The YouTube stream is art. So for you to have taken your chance on me is something that I really appreciate and I want to thank you so much for that. Okay, today I'm going to go straight to the topic of today and that is motherhood in Canada. Yes, I want to talk about how mothers survive in this climate. Yes, trust me, it's not an easy thing. Now, if you're a man and you're listening to me right now, you feel like motherhood is not your thing, after all, you are a man. Please don't feel that way because this concerns everyone, except you are not ready at some point, like you're not going to raise a family at some point. Or if you already have a family, you don't want to know more the, uh, the dynamic of how families are raised in Canada. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about, today rather, I'm going to talk about how mothers survive, how families are raised, like I said before, how things are done when it comes to raising children in Canada. It's all the same thing, I know. I'm using different words to explain one thing, but that's the way I can explain myself right now. So if you're interested in something like this, please listen, listen to this video. Yeah, apart from that, I would also be discussing, um, not even a discussion, because I'll be telling you a story, my story, of the story of how I delivered my baby girl yeah tiara Olua is a name i would be this i'll be i'll be telling that story to you all today and um it's a pretty intense one it's one i've always wanted to share so i have given myself this medium and chosen this day as the day i'm going to spill the bay so you guys please listen to my video and um, subscribe if you like me or if you like the content that i share Comment in the comment section if you have questions as parents or as a single person who is intending to raise children in Canada because really you need to know all those things. You need to know things, prepare your mind for things that could happen or things that um, or how the system works here in Canada so that when you get here you won't be surprised and you won't be shocked. As usual, like I always say, the preparation is the key. If you are prepared, if your mindset is already prepared for the kind of things you might encounter, it's going to be an easy process for you. Okay, so today that's going to be all about it. And uh, please keep on keeping on on my channel. I'll be back. So the very first thing one should be able to understand from all i haven't seen from my previous videos till now is that canada is open to everyone be you single be you married be you separated be you divorced be you whatsoever you are or who you are canada is a place for everyone to be so if you come in with kids Canada is open for everyone, like I said before. 
so that is not a problem at all another thing is this i need to put this disclaimer out i am not making this video to discourage anybody from making the moves to come to canada because like I said, Canada is open to everyone, single, married, whatsoever your situation or whatsoever situation you might be in, Canada is open to everyone. So I need to put this disclaimer out so nobody will quote me tomorrow and say, Ade Dayo in a video said, Canada is not open to me because I have kids or uh, I don't have kids or whatsoever reason. I'm putting it out now to let you know that this is not a form of discouragement neither, neither is it a form of neither is it a target against anybody no what I am up to or what I am up against here is to let you know the things that are very feasible to let you know what happens here to let you know the experiences of others here and things that I have seen and need to explain to you so that you'll be able to make the right choices when you come into the country so another thing you need to know about bringing in kids with you to canada is that bringing in kids is not a problem but having adequate provisions for them making adequate provisions for them for their care is what is most important now the truth is that when you bring in your kids of course with your kids you wouldn't want to stop work you wouldn't want to be in a position where you would be able to work or do other things for yourself now this is canada this is not like africa or nigeria or wherever where it's so easy for you to keep your kids with your neighbors or your friends or your family members to help you hold them for a while while you go to work and come back and all that it doesn't work that way here nobody actually knows you here yes even those who know you have their own problems have their own bills to sort and they have to go also for it so when you come here it's very rare for you to find anyone who is going to be in a place of uh, a guardian to your children or who is going to take in your children for you in order for you to go also and come back no you have to put them into the daycare system especially if they're infants or toddlers now, if you're coming in with your kids that are older, uh, older kids and um, old enough to handle themselves, that's fine. But the truth is that if your kids are still toddlers or infants, of course, you can't think, leave an infant alone. Not to talk of toddlers. Toddlers too can be left alone. In fact, you can't leave a child unattended in Canada. Of course, if nobody is seeing you, don't even think that nobody is seeing you anyway in this country because yeah you might think nobody is seeing you but your neighbors are watching you there are people on the streets that are watching you and if they notice that something unusual is happening in your apartment or in your house they're going to report you to the police and that isn't something you want you want to avoid that as much as possible so if you're coming into the country with your kids first of all the first thing that should come into your mind is making adequate preparation or making adequate provisions for their care so how do you want to go about it first i need to ask you are you coming in to canada to get an apartment immediately for yourself with your family or do you want to stay with people you know for a while before you get your feet now if you're coming in to get an apartment straight up with yourself and your family that's good and um, if you're coming with your like you're coming as a spouse you're coming as husband and wife with kids that's okay totally fine because if you're with your partner maybe be it man or woman both of you can shuffle the care together like someone goes to work in the morning the other person goes to work in the evening and then you rotate it that way but if you're coming in as a single parent whether a man or a woman with kids well it's going to be tougher obviously it's going to be tougher because then you are the only one who can handle your kids nobody else you are the only one that can be there for them you're the only one that can take care of them and that alone is a big problem so that's one thing you should consider if you feel your kids are too young make adequate provision for them make adequate provisions for them before you even move move away from where you stay <laughs> because yeah it's one of the things that single parents face here 
So I would always advise that if you're going to be staying with people, ask them how they go about stuff. If you're going to have to put your kids in the daycare, I need to inform you, sir or ma, daycares in Canada are expensive. Now, the way people go about the daycares in this place is that they get, it depends on where you stay though, they get subsidized daycare services so that the amount you're supposed to pay daily for the service of uh, the services of the daycare would be reduced by some certain percentage because the government pays a part of it now that is if you're entitled to that um service you have to be a taxpayer and the taxpayer in the place where you reside and all of that well i'm not really sure if there is a service for newcomers i will still have to check that and get back to you guys okay i won't give you information i know nothing about so You've got to prepare your mind. Are you putting them in the daycare system? How much does it cost to put a child in the daycare system? How many children are you putting in the daycare system? How much are you earning? Yes, that's a question. If you're earning a certain amount of money, you have to be able to make the ded deductions. Okay, if I pay this out of my daycare, okay, the daycare, if I get this daycare fee out of this money, how much is going to remain for me to pay all the bills and then still survive on it alongside my kids? All of those things are things you need to consider. Most of the times to parents, um, single moms without their spouse who come into Canada end up, let's not, let me not say end up because yeah, all of these things is going to be temporary. There will be a point in time when your kids will be growing and then you would be able to go to work or maybe you would just make an arrangement somewhere somehow i don't know but it's always very difficult and that is what i'm trying to portray that is what i'm trying to make you see here so as a single person single mom single dad who is coming to canada with kids you need to consider the amount you're going to pay from your salary yes because each day, assuming you're earning a hundred dollars and the daycare service for a child is fifty dollars out of the hundred dollar. Trust me, you're earning a hundred dollar, you're not gonna get a hundred dollar by the end of the day because you're gonna be getting the government is gonna deduce or reduce the money by taking off tax, taking off these pension deeds and all of that. So all of those deductions might reduce your money to maybe seventy dollars. Now if you're paying seventy you are getting 70 as your take home pay, $70 at your take home pay, and you're removing $40 from $70 for the daycare of your child. How much do you think is going to remain? Exactly. So these are the things that you should consider before you leave the country so you would know how to plan it. And even if you don't have any solution to it, at least you know it at the back of your mind that these are the things you're going to know sorry you're going to face right another thing to know is that if you say you're going to hire a nanny to help you with your kids while you go to work oh my god that's even worse because here this is canada you have to pay every person who works the normal wage yes so you're going to be paying your nanny per hour and if your nanny is supposed to get 11 dollars per hour let's just assume yeah, how much are you earning again? That's the question. Your nanny is getting $11 out of maybe the $13 you're getting. Hey, God, you've <laughs> wasted your money on nanny services. So that's why most people don't even go that route at all. Most people don't even think about going that route because it's not possible. Okay, except when you're earning very high or you're earning a very good, good wage and um, above average, and you feel you can afford it but most times most people can afford it so that route is closed okay so that's one thing another thing is that your dreams and your aspirations uh, might have to be in store might have to wait a little yes your dreams and aspirations might have to wait because you have to take care of your kids first now as a mother too you might be thinking it's normal i have a child it's normal that i would want to raise my child right yes it is even to me as i'm speaking to you right now i've, I've been thinking about having i don't know 
cracking my, cracking my brain about how to go about a daycare my baby's daycare and how where i'm going to put her to start working back and all that okay before i move into that there's a thing there's something i need to tell you about so if you are a mom in canada coming to canada one thing you should know is if you're going to be giving birth in canada canada allows uh, a one-year maternity so if you've worked for a while and you give birth while working or after working for a while you can stay home to take care of your child for one year and that's what i'm doing right now i am on maternity leave taking care of my baby i've been on maternity leave since october and yeah it's coming to an end soon and i am not looking forward <laughs> to it because yeah it's going to be very hard for me to make my videos and uh i won't have as much time to myself as i have right now but the main thing i want you to know here is that canada has a maternity program that allows a woman stay at home for a year after giving birth to a child and it is a paid maternity now it's a paid maternity does not mean they'll be paying you the same amounts you get when you're at work no it's just paid so that you'll be able to survive to some extent at least just some extent too, because trust me they want the money is not that much Sorry, I didn't see anything. Can you please scrap that out? <laughs> okay, that was just by the way. So sometimes you might have to put your dreams and aspirations by the by by the side to take care of your kids and to focus on them. And what that means is, if you're not earning a wage or a salary, it means that you have to live on the system. Yes, you can still get welfare from the government, but it's going to be a minimized a very reduced rate like you're getting eight hundred dollars in a month and what's that going to do for you is that's just money for rent that is if you're living in a very cheap apartment yes if you're living in a very cheap apartment because you are in a very cheap province because it also depends on the province you're living if you're living in a very cheap apartment in a very cheap province it still would not be enough because when you remove the rent what is going to remain for food, for transportation, for all sorts of things, clothing and all sorts of things in a month. So yeah, you need to think about all of those things. Now, nobody is going to give you this kind of advice. Nobody is going to tell you these things that I'm telling you. That is why I brought it upon myself to state it out here so that those who are interested would really know how it works here, okay? so that's another thing well i haven't said all of this this is not to tell you that if you are a mother or a parent bringing your kids to canada that it won't work out no there are several people who have done it and are still doing it and in fact i've seen a woman who came in alone without a husband with like five to six kids and she's handling them I don't know if she's working because it's been a long time I saw her and I've not been keeping up but she, the truth is that they are surviving. You would survive one way or the other. I'm just saying all of this so that you can have an open mind and uh, um, prepare your mind for things you might be up against. Like I said before, I always repeat myself, I know. So if you're coming in with your husband and uh, you're going to stay in people's house or in, in a relative or friend's house for a while before you get your footing, that might be helpful. In the sense that, of course, you have other people inside the house with you that might be able to, you, to help you with your kids. But of course, always remember that whosoever's house you're going to stay in as a family, trust me, the number one thing that should be at the back of your head is that you're already a burden because in each household people already know how they plan themselves to manage whatsoever it is that they earn per month so if you're coming in with your whole family and you're joining that family you already know that triple the burden and um, if you're staying too long with them mm-hmm fight will start to issues will start so if you're staying with people you have to make plans that maybe after a month or two you're going to find your own apartment and go and live your own life and start your own life by yourself so 
there won't be issues but if you're staying too long with people oh my god let it be said that i have said it <laughs> i have told you my path so i'm not discouraging anybody from coming to canada with their kids or their family or anything i'm just telling you the reality of the situation of things in canada or anywhere in the abroad yes so you have to make plans adequate plans adequate preparations don't just come anyhow because if you come anyhow you see anyhow <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's beginning to sound like I'm ash, or is it just to me? Whatsoever the situation is, please make plans, make adequate plans before you leave. So, I think I should be part of your plan. My videos should be part of your plan so that you <laughs> keep watching to know what happens each day, every day. So, at this point, I'm going to go straight to my delivery journey and. Um, this part of this video is what I've been looking up to like literally while I was sleeping I was thinking of how I'm going to say it so now it's time to talk about it and I'm happy okay so I'm going to start from when my water broke my water broke while I, okay let me just say it I was sleeping at night beside my hobby and then normally as a pregnant woman who is due at 40 weeks right because it was on the 40th week the first day in the 40th week was when my water broke and it was on thanksgiving day in canada 12th of october so i was sleeping and then i felt the urge to go and pee i went to pee <laughs> and usually when i pee i know that i was sleepy so I was sleepy and grudgy and everything and I got to the bathroom, I sat on the toilet seat, I peed and I came out and I felt like something was still trickling down but I just assumed uh, maybe it's just, maybe I didn't finish peeing, you know. Sometimes you do that, and when, maybe when you're in a haste to leave the toilet seat and go back to sleep and then maybe you forget to finish up, I don't know, I don't know, I sure I knew that something was fishy but I know it because I was still feeling very very sleepy so i went to the bed again and i tried to sleep back on the bed and i just did there i still felt like something was trickling down that can be normal right so i just decided okay let me just keep observing i was laying down and then i just felt a gush like once i just stood up and i was like wow woke up hobby okay my what i think my water just broke <laughs> and that was it so as i stood up and um, i was trying to walk to the toilet since the water was still trickling down i just felt another big gush and this time it was slimy and brownish and you know was it brownish let me not see what i did. <laughs> it wasn't brownish but it was slimy and then it came out in the rush like in a big one so i couldn't go to the toilet anymore and i stood there i stood there for a while allowing it to come out and then I told Obi to help me get the things I prepared for so that um, I could have something on and I called the hospital, told them about the situation of things because I know that when your water breaks, you are supposed to go to the hospital immediately to avoid infections. That is what I was told. So I got to the hospital, I was at the triage, they looked at me and everything, they, said, they observed my water broke, yeah, I couldn't lie about that, I wouldn't lie about that, it broke. So yeah, at that point, you knew, okay, I'm going to keep you here on admission, so you're going to be at the delivery, whatever. I got there, I got a bed, they put me on the bed with the monitors and all of that, and then they started giving me medication to induce the pregnancy, because yeah, as at the time the water broke, I had not started labor. In fact, I was still like two centim one centimeter dilated or something. So at one centimeter dilated and the water already broke, they had to start giving me medication to hasten the process up so that I could go into labor. But then after some hours of waiting, after taking the medication like twice or thrice, because they were just giving me half pill, I think quarter pills or stuff like that, just to see how it progresses. Nothing was progressing anywhere. It was just still the same thing since I came and then the worst part of it was that the baby was not moving the baby was just there not making any signs she was just there relaxing herself you know like she doesn't want to come out and everything so there was a point the nurse came the nurse in charge came and asked me 
to change positions on the bed and gave me a very sweet drink to drink just to see if the baby's activity would increase the baby's activity was not increasing even after that i drank all sorts of drinks <laughs> she refused to move so at that point i don't know what they were talking about i just knew that something was wrong i was just on the bed but i knew that something was wrong because yeah it wasn't normal that they would tell me to come and change positions uh, at several intervals so when it was around i think seven or eight in the night at night when the, the doctor i can't even remember who came to tell me that okay it was the doctor who came to tell me that they've been observing the fact that the baby has not been moving much and they never can tell it seems like she's in she's in she's not feeling comfortable in there and that they might have to do a they might have to do an emergency c-section i wasn't feeling any pains or anything even with the drugs that they were giving me to induce labor nothing was happening so yeah I, I I myself was not feeling comfortable like since the baby wasn't moving of course I you know I won't be comfortable so they told me they might have to do an emergency c-section because if they should wait and say that okay maybe if they should keep inducing me till um, I'm fully dilated it might be too late for the baby because it doesn't seem like she's comfortable in there with the way she has been responding since morning at that point i just started panicking and i felt like what i wasn't prepared for a c-section i actually wanted to do the hebrew women stuff you know give birth vaginally through the vagina sorry to the vj and um of course that's a natural plan that i had but i'm not the type of person that wants to insist on and uh, this particular type of way is the way I want to give birth. In fact, I'm not that traditional, no. Anything that works, it, the main thing to me is the life of my baby and my life. Any other thing goes last. Our lives matter to me first. And then, of course, Obi doesn't really have a problem. So I asked him what he thinks and he was like, that's fine. And uh, yeah, we decided we were going for the C-section. So that day, that night, I was wheeled into the theater alone. Yeah, Obi was not there with me, and that was a point that 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 one pained me because I actually felt like I needed someone to be by my side at that point to hold me and tell me that everything was going to be okay. I've never been to the hospital in my life. Like I've never been admitted for any reason any reason at all if i ever find myself sick is either i take one parastamol i take tiny all i take some and i'll be fine so having to go into the theater for surgery that night it hit me fair and square and it hit me from all angles that i'll be cut open that a surgery was going to be performed on me it was my first hospitalization experience and so i didn't find it funny many people will be saying might be saying or thinking in their mind that what's so strange about that well it is strange to me because i rarely go to the hospital for anything i've never been admitted like i said in my life for any reason not even drip i've never taken drip but <laughs> oh my god did i overtake drip <laughs> So the long and short of the whole thing is that the baby came out and she was totally fine. She was so healthy. Nothing was wrong with her actually. And the doctor was wondering what happened. Why, was she, why wasn't she responding? Probably because she was just relaxing herself and not feeling like coming out that day. But she was fine. Was I fine? As at that moment, I was super fine. I was happy to carry my baby. You know that moment where you carry your baby for the first time and be like, wow she's the most beautiful girl in the world like did she actually come out of me she was big she was pretty even though she had all those things around her body it was a very beautiful moment like of course did i cry i don't know i don't think i cried but i was happy 
Yeah, I was relieved. Finally, she came out. Now I'm free. Right? That's what you all think. I'm all, that's like the part one or the part two. <laughs> so when we got into the room and everything, baby saw daddy, daddy saw baby, and we were all okay and happy and all that. We started making calls and all that. And then we thought maybe the next day or the day after we were going to go back home. Uh, so the next day came around five o'clock in the evening. I said, shivering. Bobby was not there. He went home to get some stuff. I said, shivering so bad that I felt like I couldn't control the shivers. And at that point, I felt like maybe it was just normal cold because the room was always cold. And something just told me, you know, it can't be because the cold was much. I was shivering so bad that I couldn't control myself. I was, oh God, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it was so deep from inside, like it literally started from down up here. So I didn't know what was wrong, but I called the nurse and the nurse came and she was like, she checked my vitals, she checked the blood pressure. She saw that my blood pressure was high and everything was high. Everything was just high. All the vitals she checked was high. So at that point, she had to call in the doctor to come and check on me and everything. And so from henceforth, from that moment on, it was another thing entirely. <laughs> so it happened to be that I had an, I had an infection. The six section area had an infection. But at first it wasn't known, it wasn't seen because I think it was just cropping up at that point. I don't know what caused the infection because I think it, the surgery was pretty successful. So it still baffles me till date to, uh, to understand what could have gone wrong. Because yeah, it's not as if I'm a dirty person. I can't say that I, it was me that caused the infection or it was the doctors or it was a nurse. I can't even say. I just knew that I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't at all. And another thing that really pained me was the fact that you know the Yoruba culture, when you give it to a child like that, the christening has to be done in seven days, traditionally, right? So we weren't able to do that because I was still at the hospital as at seven days when the baby was supposed to be christened. And we had to make plans with my mom to do it back in Nigeria where they had a ceremony on our behalf. While I was on the hospital bed fighting for my life, they were doing, they were eating jollof rice and chicken and everything back home. And I was at the hospital. In fact, I did a video. God, the night I did that video, I was not myself. You can imagine you just, you just gave birth and you had a surgery and the surgery even got infected. I couldn't even stand up well. I couldn't walk well. I was always standing up bent like this. Everything was just upside down for me at that moment. Trust me, it wasn't a funny moment for me. It wasn't the best moment of my life at all. And the fact that I still had to raise the baby, I still had to breastfeed, I still had to feed her, I still had to dress her and do everything by myself at that point, Oh my god, it almost led me to depression, but yeah, I just knew that I had to be strong for her because if I don't, like I said and advised before, who is going to do it? Nobody else is going to do it for me, so I knew that I had to be strong and I knew that I had to just charamo, I don't know how to put it in English, charamo arami or something like that. I knew that I had to be strong and that was just it. So. I did a lot of tests, I did a lot of MRI, this and that, they even put me in the one that, they put me in one machine like this, and I, I couldn't, like, I couldn't, I could, it felt like I wanted to faint inside of my, I think it was an MRI machine or something, all this machine that used to look like coffee, <laughs> and they would just place you like this, and be scanning all sorts of things, right, while, while they'll be telling you not to breathe for some seconds, and, God, 
I went through a lot in the hospital. I wish I could just I, I wish I, I did I did a video of all those experiences. Like if I watch them I'll just be crying. It's not something that I can even explain. It's it's not something I wish on my worst enemy. So at the end of the day, what broke me through the infection was the fact that the infection started bringing out pores. The, the area, the incision area started bringing out pores at some point. Yeah, I started emitting some liquid nonsense. So I told the doctor about that. Several doctors came. The worst, ah, I forgot to say this. The kind of flesh I have is not the kind of flesh that you can easily poke and get blood out of. So they had to poke me several times to get blood. No blood. Like they literally can, most of the times, would not be able to find my vein. In fact, some, there was a time they had to take, um, they had to look, use a computer to help, to help find my vein. Like, I don't know the kind of skin I have, but really, to find a vein on me is always very hard. So you can imagine the kind of poking, 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 poking they had to every single day. Whenever I see a nurse coming like this with that, with that stain they use and everything, all their equipment, oh my God. I'd be like, God, what kind of life is this? They're coming again, they're coming again to poke me. Poked me everywhere. Even because my legs were so swollen and all, they would have poked my leg. They would have poked every part of me. But these two ants, there was nowhere on these two hands that they did not poke. Hair, 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 everywhere. And they can poke me like 20 times just to get a paint. Not even a paint. You know all those small bottles where they put. I am not a medical personnel or anything. So I don't know the names of this thing. Where they put in blood, those small little bottles. Just to get it just half of it. And it's not as if I was lacking blood or anything. It's just that it's always very difficult to get blood on me. I've been experiencing that for a very long time right now. Like, I've been experiencing it. I, I've always had that experience, especially when I go to laboratories to get do a test or to get a blood um, blood test done. Man, it's always crazy because they have to poke and poke and poke and poke. And trust me, you don't want to be in a position where they'll be poking you up and down. Man! And it really got me thinking that, man, there are a lot of things on the happening in this world that people don't really talk about, like this old birth experience thing and all. People don't talk about it, like what they really, really go through. And it's really, really sad because a lot of people have to have the experience through other people's experiences. They have to have the knowledge through other people's experiences, which is the reason why I'm even doing this video in the first place. because. Though body differs, pregnancy differs and all that. I mean, I didn't have any problems through my pregnancy, it's worse. Man, smooth sailing and all that. I mean, I had all the normal symptoms of pregnancy and all that, but yeah, but it, there wasn't any complications. Then I would have thought, or you would have thought that the delivery would have gone smoothly too. But no, I stayed in the hospital for a good two weeks. Yeah, they opened the incision, they opened the incision and um, drained the, the pearls out but at some point they told me that maybe they would have to take me back into surgery to close it up or something. Then they made another decision and told me that I would have to leave it that way for it to dry up itself and um, I would have to do daily cleaning of the place. Someone would come to do the, th the cleaning of the place every day. So you can imagine that. Considering the fact that I had a baby, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't just funny. I will tell you for where we are now. That's my delivery story, anyway. So after two weeks in the hospital, I think I was a little bit better. I had a lot of antibiotics. The ones that were working, the ones that were not working, the ones that even got things more complicated. I went for a lot of tests, a lot of ultrasounds again just to see if there was anything remaining and all of that all sorts of things the nurses even got tired of me i'm sure <laughs> i got tired of staying in the hospital too there was a day they told me i couldn't go home and i broke out in tears and i was like oh god because the nurses were always telling me i'm going to be the first person they will see that i'll be staying after bed for like more than one week or for days after 
And I'll be like, why me, Lord? Why me? Why me? What did I do wrong? What did I do different that could have put me in this kind of position? But then I look at my baby and be like, okay, I've got to be strong for this girl. No matter what the situation is, I've got to heal up fast so that I can have a time to take care of her. Because if I don't, like I said, we will. If I don't, like I said, who will? So at this point, I'm going to be ending this video. I think I've already spoken too much. Thank God for life. Thank God for my baby. She's fine. She's the one shouting underneath right now. So she's good. She's doing fine. I am also fine right now. And um, yeah, the incision has healed to a very large extent. Of course, the incision, incisions always age. And I, I think that's just the part that's, that's remaining. So that's my delivery story. Um, I don't know why I have wanted, to, I've always wanted to share it, but I have shared it now and I feel relieved that I have. So if you are a woman and you have a different delivery story than the usual, please let me know in the comment section. If you're planning to come into Canada with your kids and you don't know what's going on or what you're going to do about it or you don't even know how to prepare, let me know in the comment section so I can advise as much as I can. And if there's anything you feel that I need to improve on in my videos to improve on my videos, please let me know in the comment section. Ask me questions. A lot of things can be discussed in the comment section. Please, let's make use of the comment section. Like I said before, thank you 45 subscribers. I'm super grateful that you all have deemed it necessary, you did it fit, deemed it fit to be a part of my journey on this channel. I really appreciate you guys and um, I do pray that good things would never cease in your life and in the life of your families. Okay, so that will be the end of today's, that will be the end of today's video. Uh, I hope you've been able to get a thing or two from the old gist since morning. My head is even pinning me. Okay, guys, next time I'm going to be taking the express entry as a old topic. So look out for that video. If you're thinking of coming to Canada and you feel you're going to go through the express entry route, I'm going to be taking that topic as a whole in my next video please please do not miss out because this information is going to be very important and uh, you need to watch that video okay see you in my next video guys thank you for staying tuned please subscribe to my channel subscribe 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 please comment and like share my video so this is still a detail on these impressions as usual don't go nowhere please watch my next video better still watch the playlist of the videos i've made from the beginning bye for now